Hi, and welcome to the Luxembourg PVC Stories. Today, it is our pleasure to host Fabienne and Guy from Vesalius Biocapital. Hi there. Hi, Stefan. Good morning, Stefan. A pleasure to host you. So let's get started. What can you tell us about Vesalius Biocapital? How, who and when did this whole adventure start? Well, for Vesalius, we have to go back uh, to 2007, um, when um, a group of people, and um, to name uh, some people, uh, Stéphane Vordot uh, and Gaston Matthijsens, created Vesalius here in Luxembourg um, to, as a new venture capital fund. 2007 was an interesting period because um, you are still suffering in VC from the dot-com crisis. Um, VC at that time was not the flavor of the day, and in biotech it was uh, challenging to, to start, but um, we created this fund because we discovered that there was a need for a, a player that can uh, invest in uh, the promising pharma biotech companies that we have throughout in Europe, and that's how Vesalius was uh, created. We chose Luxembourg um, at that time because the legal framework uh, and the infrastructure uh, was in place uh, here, and we opted to have a SICA structure, so a product uh, um, reg uh, rules uh, fund, which uh, would bring additional assurance to, to our investor base. And so that's how uh, it started. Um, the story goes on. Since then, we have created three funds, uh, um, all focused to life sciences, because that's our particularity. We invest in companies that, have, that address a real medical needs. In the beginning, we did um, early stage, sometimes even seed capital. And when we moved on over time, we have been investing more and more in mature companies, and we went what we call, in our jargon, mid and late stage. For most people, it's still pretty early uh, because it's still companies that when we enter them don't have any revenue, that don't have uh, any profit or, um, or other important metric at that time. It's basically on the promise uh, of uh, a new uh, breakthrough technology that we want to push forward. As just explained, could you elaborate a little bit more on your main vertical and also the types of investments you are executing? Uh, by the way, how do you source deals? So Vesalius has two main investment themes. The first one is uh, health tech, any technology aimed at improving human health and biopharma. Uh, we're focusing on human health, so no veterinary medicine or any uh, lifestyle type of uh, application. And um, we are the way we're sourcing deal is Vesalus has been in the field for so long that we have an ongoing pipeline and ongoing feeding of the pipeline um, with a lot of uh, many contacts with the previous investors and uh, other contacts at uh, research institu institution. And we actually renew and get exposition to new technologies uh, through events uh, like BioEquity and BioEurope, JP Morgan's, the, the usual um, fairs to, to actually get uh, exposed to, to new, te to new uh, companies looking for investment. <laughs> Any specific <laughs> deals you would like to mention and highlight? Uh, recently, we closed uh, Forendo. We exited basically for the, the deal in uh, Forendo. It's a Finnish biotech company who is uh, focusing on research in endometriosis. It's uh, women's cells and it's, uh, it's a concern for an increasing number of women where you actually have, uh, unfortunately, uh, endometriotic tissues that uh, grows where it's not supposed to grow. And it's actually a major cause of infertility. And Forendo had a very original and novel uh, target, biological target, and they were the very first one in the field. And um, we exited last year, late last year. Yeah, indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. And if I may add, I think for the audience, it's interesting to, to, to know that we, this is a typical biopharma deal uh, in Finland. And let me take an example in digital health, and let me go to the other spectrum of Europe. From Finland, we moved to Portugal, um, where we have done uh, a very nice um, digital health deal. Uh, we invested in that company um, back in 2008. We also exited it uh, just a bit before 
uh, Forendo. And in digital health, um, what we typically look for is, of course, um, 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 a digital solution that addresses a real medical need, because that's for us important. We are not uh, digital guys or tech guys that just invest with technology as such, or because it's AI or other, I would say, gimmick word that you hear a lot uh, nowadays. For us, it's always important that whatever we invest in is really addressing a big medical need and it's validated. So Sort Health, when we invested, it was uh, a device, FDA approved, and on a very bold story, and that's the second thing we look at in digital health investment is to have really big efficiency gains, because that's what you can do thanks to technology, is to really um, do things in a much more efficacious way than it has been done before. In this case, it is uh, the revolu uh, revolutionizing um, physiotherapy. Physiotherapy is a, a profession that has been along for many years, um, but that hasn't uh, really changed the business model. And here, by uh, the technical solution that we offer, we uh, bring uh, a big change in there and bring it in a much more uh, efficacious way than it used to be before. It's great to combine uh, technology, but mm. also then focus on the human side and also the medical needs. That's what we know. That's, that's our core business, you know, human health. Great. Um, what can you tell us about your, your setup, uh, your offices? Um, we understood you have CCAS in Luxembourg. How is mm. the local operating model working and the profiles of your employees? Well, the way the, the Vesalius is organized is actually we have contacts and uh, offices in Paris, Munich, um, Luxembourg, of course, <laughs> and uh, Brussels, of course, as well. And um, so in, in, um, there are about 12 people um, and the, the decision-making process is actually taking place in Luxembourg. So we, have regular, we used to have regular meeting before COVID and that's where all the investment decisions were taken. Um, and, and so that we can all uh, get together and, and uh, share our experience and uh, the oncoming deals. Um, the way we are organized, we have a compliance officer and uh, myself, uh, analyst, um, in the office in Luxembourg, but the managing partners are located in uh, Brussels, Munich, and venture partners in Paris. And um, so it, it's, a, it's widespread, but at the same time it's uh, regulated and it's, it, the decisions are made in, in Luxembourg, basically. Yes, and I think... Um it's very important to, to mention uh, that, Fabian. So in our business, you know, and you've heard it from the two examples, we invest from Finland to Luxembourg, and I would say anything in between um, in Europe. Luxembourg is very centrally located, um, so we come regularly together uh, with the team here uh, to uh, discuss the projects, invite the companies. Eh? If we invest in a company, so basically our investment decision is always based on the several encounters with the companies we invest in. So we go, of course, in situ, eh, and the company is based in, I would say, uh, southern Germany. We go to southern Germany, but when we take the decision, we bring the whole team here to Luxembourg so they can present in front of the whole Vesalius team here where we have basically what you could call the culmination of due diligence, where all the conclusions come together and then basically we decide, are we going to invest, are we not going to invest, how much, and that's the decision that is taken here. Also in Luxembourg, um, what we have done for the third fund, because it became important for the marketing uh, aspects, is that we choose a UVECA label uh, to, to do so. So we are not a full-blown AFM. I think it's a bit too much for the activities that we do. And you have this uh, very good instrument, which is uh, the UVECA rule. And that's what we um, pursued here in, uh, in Luxembourg. Happy to hear that uh, you were able to get the EU VECA and that's also a smart setup you can use in Luxembourg and also great, very robust processes to have also the due diligence and decision taking here in Luxembourg. So a true Luxembourgish story. Yeah, this is. With an international focus. And um, I would also say what happened over the two last years at Vesalius Biocapital and in your sector? <coughs> Anything you would like to share? 
And so I, I know it, it's not everything has been about COVID in the last two years, but at the same time, it had a huge influence, and especially on the awareness of biohealth and its importance in, uh, in, in human uh, company, in human uh, societies. And so uh, that has been actually an, a really important uh, motivation and, and engine to actually especially get the digital part of health uh, going. And I know Luxembourg has, uh, has actually uh, been quite a spearhead uh, in that matter. Um, so the awareness was actually really nice in the sense that uh, it brought back to the front uh, a sector, a domain that was actually not considered as very sexy, such as infectiology. And <laughs> now we all know how important that is. And um, so it also brought a flow of capitals. And now we, we've seen actually an increasing number of deals that have been kind of inflated um, over their real value. Um, but that, that's something that we've been very conscious about and very aware. And so we've kept a very level-headed uh, opinion. And so we only invest in what we call realistic deals. Um, so it's not a hype. It's, it's really something that has really good chance of actually uh, getting to the patient in fine, which is basically what we are here for. Um, a lot of things actually happened in the last two years. <laughs> yes, a lot of things happened uh, indeed. Uh, but I think uh, for us, COVID has been interesting because we've also seen the portfolio that it has helped a couple of companies to move forward much faster. Eh? The, the sort story I mentioned, of course, uh, it allowed to do to treat patients remotely. Patient didn't have to go to the cabinet anymore, but could do the exercise in a, a, a distance. So, of course, it gave a big boost to that type of company. For other companies, it was uh, much more difficult because uh, we had a company uh, that is taking care of care parts, and uh, you know uh, the main clients are hospitals. Uh, in the last two years, I would say hospitals had other things to to consider than, um, um, than getting bigger efficiency. They had to treat COVID uh, in an emergency situation. So yes, it has been challenging times, but also interesting times. Have said it has drawn a lot of attention and money to, to our industry. A great momentum. And also you benefited from <coughs> digitalization and then remote access to them. <coughs> Fantastic. Um, yeah. ESG policy and strategy, how active are you? How active are we? Of course, ESG, uh, just by the number of uh, mails I get every day in my mailbox, it's certainly the flavor of today. Uh, and everybody's talking about it, uh, and everybody's trying to find ways, very rightfully, I think, to, to, to implement it, to execute it, to report on it. Uh, I, s I think we see a big exercise in there. At Vesalius, we, we don't see it as a kind of a tick-the-box exercise. Huh? Um, sometimes I feel that people are not really familiar with it, and of course they want to be compliant with uh, everything that is uh, ESG, or at least give a very good image about it. But we don't really see it as uh, a couple of boxes that we need to tick. And I think since the beginning of Vesalius, we have always been focusing on a couple uh, of things. So first of all is doing the right things. And of course, if you are in our industry, you should be very grateful because um, when we look at medical projects, we always look at areas where there is a big unmet medical need. So if you're going to invest in this project and this project is going to be successful, you know you will have a contribution to society uh, whatsoever. Whether it's for a big indication, it can also be rare diseases. Eh? We don't shy away of smaller diseases that sometimes uh, can be uh, very lethal. Eh? In some of these, they have, you have high mortality rates. So we look um, at these projects, and we've always been trying to do the right thing. So by either making better medicine, more efficacious, but also medicine that could have less side effects, for example. So I think that's um, a contribution. It's not only doing the, the right things, but doing the things right um, in there. And, and there also, uh, our industry, uh, again, is a very uh, regulated industry, a lot of rules. In every company that we invest, you know, we have FDA in the States, you have EMEA in Europe, you have national agencies that overlook, that put all kinds of procedures, and we are extremely strict um, on these ones. Before we invest, we want to make sure 
that the company has really respected all these uh, regulations in to all its extent. And when we enter, we we monitor these companies also to make sure that these highest regulatory guidelines continue to be uh, to be perceived. And I think so ESG is a kind of our nature. So the difficulty now that we have is also to see how can we report on that on a good way because it's, uh, it's a bit difficult sometimes uh, to, to report that on a, on a good way. We work on it, Stefan. It's, um, if you look at the directives, we haven't chosen to be um, uh, what you could call a chapter eight or a chapter nine um, uh, fund. I think um, that's not really required uh, in our area, but we try to see on how we can really um, get at least the spirit or the, or the goals of, of this directive in the funds which are basically uh, uh, managed. It's great you already <coughs> have those ESG values embedded and also in your DNA of, of the firm and how you do investments. Yeah, very yeah. nice. Um, the Luxembourg ecosystem and infrastructure, anything you would like to share on that one? Anything we could or should change? Well, to start, um, I think uh, um, we choose Luxembourg. Uh, we had, in the beginning, uh, a choice of many places we could go to. Uh, when we started in 2007, okay, we do it in Luxembourg. It's a good place for international uh, business. Um, I think the three funds uh, that we have in managing, we have located them all in, uh, in Luxembourg. We're at the end of our third fund, so we start thinking about new initiatives, and I think uh, we should do that again in Luxembourg. I think it's still a good place with a good uh, supporting environment um, to, do, to do the business. If there's one thing, um, if I can put a bit more criticism to the, um, to the game, is that we found that the overall um, level of costs have increased a lot over these 15 years that we are here in, uh, in business. When I compare to the beginning and now, you really see that there has been some um, inflation um, in, in many respects. And I think it's now important that Luxembourg tries to find a balanced way in that, that we can uh, go on and continue our business here in Luxembourg. Good point taken. So let's uh, remain competitive and also be careful with those costs and also not overdo it with sometimes uh, regulatory changes or challenges. <coughs> okay. Definitely, and the, um, the life sciences ecosystem in Luxembourg is really nascent. It, it's not in Luxembourg's DNA to be a biotech hub. Um, so we, we are in contact and in regular interaction with research centers, uh, with the uh, government agencies. So. We, we do know what's going on um, as far as life sciences go in Luxembourg, but once again, it's only slowly uh, getting there. So we do appreciate that there are things and it's, it's moving. So it, it, it's really good to actually see um, that the sector has become from, oh, that's not for us, and then, oh, maybe there's something interesting, and then, oh, let's go there. And so, so we are, we're at that point, and uh, so that's a really good timing for us to be in Luxembourg as well. And only agree with that message. And uh, last year we had then an, a webinar around biotech, and we'll certainly redo such session again because it's, as you said, a nascent, nascent sector and uh, industry. And so let's uh, take good care of it. It'll be our pleasure to contribute, uh, Stefan. Great. Since, uh, let's say, Vizalius Biocapital has a very interesting and specific business model, I'm eager to hear about your studies and uh, where did you start your careers? Oh, Stefan, I have to dig very deep there in my mind. You know, it's many years ago since I was in, uh, um, at university. So I studied um, uh, ingénieur commercial, um, Handelsingenieur. I don't know how to call it in English. Uh, I think there's no proper English translation for, for that degree, but um, I think most uh, people will know what it is. I studied it in Brussels, um, in Belgium. Started my career at um, at Anderson, and very quickly um, moved in everything which was healthcare. Uh, together with Stefan uh, Vodot, eh, we are compagnon de route for uh, almost thirty years now, um, and um, that's where the beginning uh, was of Vesalius. 
um, yeah, but my story is, is, is uh, about as long as geese. Uh, but uh, I started with a PhD in Paris uh, with a pharmacogenetic uh, background. Um, but then I, I moved to um, IP law uh, in the US. And then coming back to Europe, I, actually, I transformed that into tech transfer certification and then joined Vesalius as an analyst where I could coalesce all those uh, trainings uh, into good use. Very interesting and atypical. You see, we have very different spectrum. We're a small yeah. firm, as Vavin said. There are only a dozen of people, but you see, that's typical also in VC. Eh? It's really this, uh, this bringing together of all these different companies, because that's how we look at companies from all type of angles. And you have the medical uh, knowledge you need, of course, in our industry, but also the business angle to, to bring these companies and move them forward uh, towards, uh, towards a success. Very complimentary. Yeah. Uh, what type of advice would you like to give to young talents interested by VC or life science innovative solutions? Yeah, one of the one of the things that actually comes out from the the, the point that we just discussed is that do diversify your experience. Do not, I mean, you can stay in one lane, but then you will have one aspect of the business. Um, so diversity is really the key to me. I tend to agree with that, Fabienne. It's uh, it's a diversity. What I would say to youngsters, um, you know, when I was studying uh, with my commercial engineering background, I never thought that I would end up, uh, you know, in the geeky world of uh, of molecules and um, um, and things. Um, so what I would recommend from people that have done that have a study background, and if you are interested in in VC uh, in general and in, and in life science in particular is to be very open to the world, to be very curious. So from your speciality, from your background is, of course, uh, try to get experience and exposures in companies, because I think uh, in, in the target companies itself, that's where you get a lot of experience and knowledge. You see how it works um, in there. And then at some moment, try to, um, in, in, in my case, with my uh, more economic and financial background, uh, try to be open to the science, try to study it. Of course, I will never have the same deep knowledge as Fabienne has uh, on the molecular level, uh, but you can understand in, in big things how, how things work and have this open curiosity and always try to understand and go very deep in all these aspects because that's what you need to do as venture capitalists. You need to make the synthesis of a business case. It's not great science that will make a great company per definition, but it's the combination, a combination of, of, of good science with good management, flawless execution, the right level of capital, and bring that together that makes uh, a company successful. And that's what you need to bring together in VC. So to young people uh, who are interested in the VC industry, you can start in our industry as an analyst and you will probably learn a lot, but I think you will get much more if you do a tour de horizon first and then join the industry. And I assume that the team is also certainly very important in order to execute all this strategy, as you just highlighted. I think that's a very right assumption. Um, we, um, as, as I said, we are very complementary people to, to each other, and I would say not only from competence and knowledge point of view, but even character-wise. Uh, so we. Yeah. We have this openness and we accept from each other of being different, but it's basically of looking from all the angles at one same thing that I think you finally come to good, balanced and wise uh, decisions. Not only when you invest, but also when you move forward the companies, because that's also something in venture capital. It's not only the call you do when you invest, it's also when you move along um, the lifetime of these things, because things never happen as you plan them. You can imagine never. as many scenarios as you will, something else will happen. Never. And then having this flexibility of mind, the openness of, uh, of the spirit to find good and creative solutions for the problems en cours de route. We completely understood that there is an, a, a real camarad camaraderie within your firm. You talked about road companion, the characters which then fit together. That must be quite fun to work with you at Vesalius Biocapital. Very much so. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, 15 years of Vesalius and I still like it. Uh, <laughs> Not so long, but I still like it as well. <laughs> uh, 
any specific <clears throat> leader or person who inspired, motivated you, or even helped you within your career? Well, that, that's actually funny, but it really depends on which part of the career you're looking at. <laughs> but for me, uh, it was really discovering the Mendel genetics, but that was a long time ago. But that actually, that was, that was really the opening, because then <coughs> everything was possible. Um, and, and then it's the scientific rigor behind that, and that's something that you, I have to, I carried around um, all the time, ever since. It doesn't matter if it's the VC world, the research world, tech transfer world, it doesn't matter. It's really uh, that mindset that was, that was really revelatory for me. And for me, I've been, well, I, I would like to, to put uh, Vesalius in front, you know, the name of our fund, you know, um, Vesalius, it's the Latinized name of, uh, um, of Van Wezel, uh, by origin a very Flemish Dutch name, um, by thing, but the important thing is what he has done. Uh, you have to imagine um, he um, was one of the three uh, main founders of what you would call modern medicine. And I think uh, when you see what he has been doing, he has been studying the anatomy of, um, of the body in such a precision and detail that it's still useful today. He operated on a pan-European level. Uh, he was uh, from origin in the Low Countries, as you call it, but uh, he has published his work in, in, in Geneva, he studied in Padua in Italy, he was the personal doctor of Charles V, Charles Quint, um, in there, so a true European. And I think this really reflects also what we do at Vesalius from a geography point of view and the projects we look for, innovative, daring projects and pushing a bit the boundaries, as Vesalius has done, in his time, that's what we try to do at our level, uh, of course, in these uh, uh, current times. A great example and very nice metaphor, for sure. Um, just uh, for the last question, any books, series, podcasts, music you would like to share with our audience? It can be professional, but also a little bit private, if you prefer. Um, actually, I selected um, the, the book, the, the Jungle, uh, by Upton Sinclair. Uh, which is basically the, the example of uh, what chaos can ensue when you actually break the bound between human and the environment. Um, and, and so that, that's, that's a book that I actually come back to, not because of its horrific uh, rendition of what was Chicago's in, in that time, but really because uh, you can see the chain of event that happens once you actually, uh, again, uh, break the, the, the link between people. And, and what the environment we're living in. And for me, well, um, I'm not a guy listening to a lot of podcasts and these type of mm -hmm. things, but if I have to think about one, one book and thing, and going back very long time, and I'm sure uh, you can still find it probably nowadays online, uh, and it's a, it's a management book uh, that I read as a student, which had a big influence on my thinking later onwards. Um, it's Michael Porter's uh, In Search of Excellence. Uh, it's a very old one. I think we're in the 80s or the 90s uh, uh, here. But it gave me a very important lesson, In Search of Excellence. When I first read it, the word I knew what excellent mean, but the word excellence um, as, a, as, a, as a word, uh, as, a, as a substantive for me was, was new and I tried to understand it and deep it deeper and I think it also synthesizes whatever you want to do in venture capital. We are basically in search of excellence in the excellent company that we want to bring to another level of, uh, of excellence and uh, I got a lot of lessons uh, in there in the way how we work, how we behave and I think that's uh, uh, something that I have kept uh, forever. So very inspiring examples. Fabienne, Guy, thanks a lot for joining us today. It was a great session and uh, <laughs> very happy to pursue then our efforts soon. Our pleasure, Stefan. Thank you. Thank you.